Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined by the inimitable Shano D. That's me. And today we are joined by a very special guest. She recently took a leap of faith and quit her eight plus year career in corporate marketing at Spotify and Tinder to pursue her passion for helping others create the lives they want for themselves. She has a 12 week confidence coaching program called Fall in Love with Yourself to Fall in Love. She hosts Pretty Much Done, a podcast about relationships, focusing on the most important one we'll ever have, our relationships with ourselves and she got death threats on tiktok for making shakshuka <laughs> please welcome our previous spotify <laughs> partner manager julia oh my god wait how do you say your last name mazer <laughs> mazer oh. it was such a great write-up and then she botched the last name hi julia <laughs> it no. was so good that was a beautiful intro i was i felt like i was on the price is right or something that was amazing <laughs> dun, dun, that dun, was- dun. <laughs> come on down i'm here here i am thank you so much for having me on it's so good to be reconnected with you guys in a different context of course but i'm so happy to be here yeah thank you for joining us this is so exciting um so yeah let's get into the viral video <laughs> so interesting dan had, had pointed this out to me a few months ago and was like wait have you seen that well, I had seen the video, but I just didn't clock that it was you at all. I don't know why. I guess I just didn't recognize you. And then, yeah, yeah and then I saw, and I had just got, honestly, like, I, I'm sorry, Julia. Oh, God, I'm too Did honest. You freeze? But so I, I had seen the video on TikTok, and I was just like, okay, great. This chick's making shakshuka. I had no idea it was you. And then I saw this article that was like, this is actually bad that this chick is making shakshuka. And I was like, that's Julia. What? Why? <laughs> I well, know. Let's explain the video a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want me to kind of explain what happened? Yeah. 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 Uh, so I obviously host a dating and relationships podcast. As Shannon so eloquently, beautifully said, I am mm-hmm. so focused on the relationship that you have with yourself because I felt like all through my 20s, I was trying to find a man to try to kind of like fulfill me, was in these good on paper relationships. So I create content on TikTok pertaining to loving yourself and really embracing yourself and, and meeting yourself where you're at. I decided I woke up in the morning and I was like, I'm going to record a video because I woke up and I kind of gave myself some grief. I woke up at 10. I was a little hungover. I went to the Beyonce concert. And I was like, what am I going to do with my day? Hmm, do, 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 do. I don't have kids. Like, I think I'm just going to cook shakshuka and I'm going to watch reality TV. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, like, okay, all of this guilt you give for, to yourself for not being where society tells you that you should be at. I was 29 at the time. I'm now 30. You, What a great day you get to lead. Like, you get to wake up at 10. You went to Beyonce last night. You get to make this new dish and watch reality. Do whatever you want. Like, cut yourself some slack, give yourself some grace. It's okay. And you get to enjoy your life as you see fit. I record this video. And at first everyone's like, yes, queen, like, yes, love it. Oh my God. Relate to this so much. Thank you for kind of like saying the experience of what it's like to be single in your late twenties, early thirties. Yes. Then this man named Matt Walsh, who I was not familiar with, are either of you familiar with Matt Walsh? Mm, I know a Matt Walsh from like the comedy community, but not him, right? <laughs> not him. No, okay. no, that guy is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Matt Walsh, he's like a contributor for the Daily Wire. Candace Owens is like his counterpart. She was recently oh, fired from the okay. Daily Wire. He's like in that vein. Gotcha. He at the time, I literally had seven thousand followers on TikTok. I was like no followers, like this tiny, tiny, tiny creator. He has two point four million followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He takes this, he tweets my video to his 2.4 million followers. And he says, this girl, her life is meaningless. And she's too stupid to realize how pathetic her life is because she doesn't have kids and she doesn't have a husband. Wow. And took my video and it was essentially like a bloodbath in my comments. All of a sudden I... I it's like get really on TikTok. Sorry, I just had a <laughs> joke. By the way, ever it, it, uh, someone pointed out to me recently that if you search like Shakshuka girl on Google, <laughs> my shut <face>. up, <laughs> Shakshuka girl. Yeah, which is, I'm so Shakshuka is delicious. So yeah, like, did you I make it that day? 
I did, yeah. And like it took me a while to be able to eat it again. But um, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so anyway, um, he takes it. All of his followers just say like abhorrent things in my comments. Comments about my looks, comments about my gender because of the size of my skull, saying that I should be sexually assaulted. My like, I'm so <gasps> stupid. You're kidding. I should not leave my house. Yeah, really crazy, crazy stuff happening in my comments. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I, like I, I kind of describe it as like it was, felt like 500 people just like stormed into my apartment and started beating me up. I bet that's so violating. Yeah, it was a lot. It was really crazy. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, but luckily, like I've kind of gotten into like therapy and my like different like spiritual practices and modalities. Like I went mm. to the beach, I um, turned off TikTok, I meditated, like I knew how to like recalibrate my nervous system. Right. And then it's like, I'm sure you guys feel this with the internet. It's like, you almost have to rise to the occasion and then some good comes out of the end of it like mm -hmm, totally. once you kind of like ride the storm you're like okay whatever maybe like a brand deal comes or like mm -hmm. someone comes something comes out and silver a girl, linings a girl that i went to college with who has a twitter following tweeted i hadn't seen her in years it was so nice of her she like tweeted with some backstory about me and my content and who i create my content for and somehow that ended up reaching Mark Cuban. And so Mark Cuban, oh. um, yeah, he ends up coming to my defense on Twitter, starts like going head to head with Stephen Miller, like Trump's old advisor about like, well, oh what? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. This had some serious reach. This is totally. so wild. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely not on my bingo card. <laughs> um, and yeah, and that like, it got me a lot of, you know, it got me into the faces of people that I wanted to reach people mm -hmm. who are feeling ashamed of being single and felt feel very alone and lonely in the single journey. Right. Um, so it, it was a good thing in the end, but still like, it's so horrible to have to like endure that on the internet. And I, I constantly like men, I don't know how you are on the internet, Shannon, but like men love to like humble me on the, like they love to be like, you're a five, you're so ugly, like you're nobody. Totally. I can't even imagine that having that many people at once. Like, you know, I've experienced it a little bit like through the podcast with like reviews and comments and things like that. And it really does hurt. Like I get, you know, we both get so many amazing positive comments like every day, but mm -hmm. just like every now and then when there's the negative ones, it really affects me for like a few days. So I can't even imagine like all at once how horrible that was for you. And was it on that Saturday or was this like it happened throughout the week? It was like Saturday, Sunday. Actually, Saturday was positive. Sunday was mm -hmm. really like Saturday night. Sunday was when it was bad. And then like maybe like Sunday afternoon is when when Mark Cuban came out swinging, it all was well in the world. Okay, good, good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's like super dehumanizing too. I mean, people come with such vitriol. I mean, and it hurts. So I can't, and I've gotten like, it's like very much what Shannon's saying to get 500 in one day is just like devastating. Brutal. Especially because like the, the meaning of the TikTok was like to empower, em, empower single women that like you don't have to submit to these societal norms. And instead it feels like, it might have triggered people who don't live that way. Like it might have yeah. triggered those that have husbands and children because it felt like you were attacking them when really that was not your message at all. No, not at all. I, yeah, I think that that is exactly what happened. And I think that I in the video said like, and I don't have kids yet. And I, I don't have a partner yet. Like those are things that I hope to achieve one day. I don't totally. have that those things right now. And even if I didn't want to, like it still shouldn't trigger someone that badly. Um, but it's, it, it definitely felt like because I wasn't in the box that people want to place me in, they were just like projecting anger towards me for not following the ways of their the way that they're living their life and it's not that at all it's like we don't need to it doesn't need to be like singles versus people in relationship it's like everyone should just be able to do what they want to do and it not affect other people exactly it's like what is it to you I just don't understand that 
the the people in this world that are just so pressed about what everyone else is doing with their lives like unless it is directly affecting you or unless they're spreading hate or they're being yeah. like a terrible human being to others who fucking cares that other people are living their lives truly and i do think that a lot of people who aren't happy care like if you know yes. if some people pointed out to me a really good point about matt walsh and like he has four kids and a wife who's a doctor and the way that he spent his Saturday afternoon was not with his kids and his wife. He was tearing down a 29 year old woman. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> true. This is pretty ironic to me. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the luxury of being a man. I would say as well. <laughs> yeah. Babe, make dinner. I am talking shit on Twitter. This needs to happen now. <laughs> yeah so and that and and it got like 40 million impressions and i'm sure his payout from twitter or x or whatever was huge like i'd like to see some of that money so because he just ripped the video it wasn't a retweet or anything he just uploaded the copy of it he stole your content yeah oh shit he did he stole it yeah that's crazy did you report it from a copyright perspective to get it ripped off or i think I mean, I don't want to like, I didn't even want to pursue legal stuff. Like I don't need, it's like, I don't need to like, you know, worry about Matt Walsh and his life. Like I'm, I'm pretty spiritual and I'm kind Mm, of like karma, karma. Yeah. Like I think a man who built his career on putting down women and trans people, like that is a horrible existence and Mm -hmm. just living in that is like enough karma for me like, I don't know, i'm like you that yeah. that's how you gotta for live sure. and you'll okay. get good karma coming back your way totally yeah i like i was emailing with mark cuban i'm like that's great enough so truly cool. and then also you were able to get like more tiktok followers as well did that like translate into more listens on your podcast too yeah for sure i love Amazing. that's what i love about the internet is like with this is I was able to connect with like-minded individuals. And I think those are like the most fulfilling parts of what we do, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, It just really does suck that you have to like endure this. It almost feels like there's no other way around it on the internet. Like you have, it's like 50% of people like my content and 50% of people hate me and want me to be sexually assaulted and die. Yeah. So (laughs) it's crazy. Hey, they say if you don't have any haters, you're doing something wrong. So sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I don't know if that's the quote I would have dropped there, but <laughs> what, what, why? Well, it's just, no, I mean, the, I think the vitriol is like, there's like a lot of angry men online, you know, and they're just like, they're probably single themselves. A lot of these guys who are posting, you know, and so they're just like hateful for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like I did hear a lot to Shannon's point, like people did say all press is good press. And like, although it didn't feel great, I was on the view and like, you know, like there, there were things that came out of it. Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. So net, net, would you, if, if the devil came to you and said, listen, this is going to happen, would you do it? I wouldn't make a deal with the devil. <laughs> okay, not the devil, Shannon. Yeah. <laughs> Sh- Shannon the angel. Like, would, like, was it worth it? I guess is I guess what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, it was worth but, it. Wow. For sure. Yeah, I think it was worth it. It also, what it did solidify for me, what it really solidified for me, I, I grew up Russian Jewish and I thought this was a cultural thing for me of me feeling this pressure to get married and have children. Mm -hmm. I realized throughout all this rhetoric that was going on, this is not just a cultural thing. This is a societal thing. Like society really does look down upon women for not being married and having children at a certain age. And it made me very rooted in the message that I'm trying to help people with. And so Mm -hmm. I think that that was the best part of it all. Totally. What a turn around. Right. Um, so you do coach coaching, confidence coaching, and was, were you doing that before the podcast or how did that start? So honestly, um, throughout this whole ordeal to get like super specific, I, I started to realize, first of all, something that was scary for me when this was happening was if you Google my name on the internet, I realized you can probably find my address 
and that scared me wait what yeah so i own my place so i bought my place a few years back and like that's public record and so that was really like a big fear when all of this was going on i was sleeping with my alarm system i was pretty scared oh my god yeah and i realized like okay maybe and then i had been having these thoughts personally already like maybe la is not really the place for me yeah and i started toying with the idea could i move somewhere else Mm -hmm. and i i had visited austin a few times and i started to like it i was dating someone long distance we ended things and i found myself just like doing the thing you do when you go through a breakup or a big life event where you're on Zillow and you're just like, could I live somewhere else? (laughs) Totally. And I found this one place on Zillow and I wrote to them because their place was a bit out of my budget. And I said, Hey, like really love your place. I'm super responsible. Own my place in LA. I'm 30. Any flexibility on the price? And they were like, Hey, not flexibility on the price, but we are looking to move to LA. Where in LA do you live? Oh, and Yeah. And so I, they were only looking in my area, like literally only looking in where I lived. Wow. And I was like, we should swap homes. This is so great and serendipitous. No way. Yeah. And so you can just swap homes like that. We just like both signed leases for zero dollars for each other's places. Like that's what we did. It just oh, fell into gotcha, my lap. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like they're rent. You guys are renting from each other. Totally. But like okay. they're paying their mortgage. I'm paying my mortgage. It just Ooh. fell into my laps, and I yeah, I just like felt like this was a sign. I, I'm yeah. very much like believer in that. Mm-hmm. And this kind of like fell into my laps. So I was like, I'm looking to move anyway. And obviously you guys know, I worked at Spotify. We didn't have an office here. I didn't know about like new policies. I just started kind of like moving forward as if everything was fine. And then they were like, Hey, we don't have an office. You can't move. And I, and I was like, well, darn, yeah. <laughs> like, I really need this to go through. And so I just like started to build out a coaching program. Cause I was like, I can just pivot, you know, this is really like things like this don't fall out of the sky for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I want to move forward with my life. And like, I feel very rooted in the message that I'm helping people with, with dating and confidence and coaching. And so I've just like started on this new career path for myself. I left corporate. It didn't like, it wasn't planned, but it kind of all happened at once. I turned Mm -hmm. 30, I dyed my hair brown. I'm like, some people call it a midlife crisis. I call it evolution. I don't know. I love Um, it. And yeah. And so now I'm like coaching people. I'm creating content. um, I'm trying to go full time with a podcast. It's really scary. It's probably the scariest thing I've ever done. Because as you guys know, like the uncertainty of it all is so hard. Like I loved the stability of my job and I loved where I worked. It just kind of, you can't have everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so here I am. That's amazing. And did you... I saw that you have been doing your podcast for a couple of years now. Were you already doing it before you joined on with Spotify or was that something that you started as you were working? Yeah. So I've been doing it for a year and a half and I, it's, I joined like Spotify. I worked at Tinder previously. So like the dating Mm. and relationships element has always been a thing for me. Yeah. And when I joined Spotify, um, I was learning so much about podcasting and they're super like encouraging of people being creators. And I thought this is like, I'm learning so much about podcasting myself. Yeah. What better time than to launch my podcast? Um, I was going to ask if it was like a conflict of interest or not, but I'm, I love that they're um, encouraging of that. Yeah. They, they were super supportive throughout it all. Um, And so, yeah, it was kind of like, a side passion for a mm-hmm. bit. And then now it's just something that I've kind of go, gone all in on. I'm sure it was like a similar scenario for you guys. That's amazing. Um, well, we are going to get more into all of that, like during the situations, because we have ones that pertain to it. Um should we get into it, Danny? What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Julia, this is going to be great. And I've learned I'm excited. So <laughs> I'm excited. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of dating. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. For sure. <laughs> Take us away, Shano. 
All right. AITA for my response when asked, why are you still single? I 36 F get asked the question, why are you still single? But saying none of your darn business, sweetie, doesn't seem to work. This question just pisses me off, especially since the reason for why I'm single is pretty traumatic and very personal. They feel sorry for me. I can see it because they list all my great traits, then say it's a shame that no man is willing to quote unquote win it. What the fuck? Unfortunately, I get caught off guard a lot by people, especially women, asking this question. But since I can't control the fact that they ask, I decided to use this method that I came up with. If a woman asks why I'm still single, I'll just tell her because I still haven't met your boyfriend yet while acting somewhat slutty in the moment. (laughs) So far, it seemed to shut them up. It's kind of passive aggressive. Yes, but I just feel some sort of power doing it. Well, a few weeks ago, my sister introduced me to her boyfriend's sister. And once she sat down, she asked, how old are you? I tell her and she gasps and goes on to ask, why are you still single? I look at her and say, it's because I still haven't met your boyfriend yet. She has a boyfriend, yay her, in the sluttiest tone I could muster while also pulling the duck face post. (laughs) She looks at me in utter shock, then puts her coffee down while my sister stares at me like, what the fuck? The conversation gets awkward and minutes later she gets up saying that she doesn't feel well and leaves quietly. My sister blows up at me asking what I just said and I start arguing with her about how this woman was a snoop. She told me to get over myself, act my age and stop being childish, which she assumed is the reason why I'm single and will always be because no no man wants to be with such a nut job. They are expecting apologies from me because of what I said. AITA. Oh, my God. The gaslighting is wild. Oh, Um, for sure. She's not the asshole. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I there was a um episode of yours that I was listening to with Steph Beagle, I think that's yeah. her name, and you guys were talking about like this exact thing and yeah. we actually in like two uh, two recent episodes, I believe, like talked about this as well because I've been getting this question of not why are you so single, but like when are you getting married? Yeah. Cuz I've been with my boyfriend for 9 years now and um Like, it just seems like for some reason that like nine year mark, like I didn't, I didn't ever used to get it before, but now so many people, like when I say it's been nine years there, it's like very negative reactions and like, where's the ring and what's he waiting for? And, and so when we had talked about this, um, Danny had kind of like his assumption was that like it was it's not really an invasive question like unless you have like a sensitivity around it Mm because like my boyfriend and I right now are like in therapy working on like our different perspectives on marriage Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to see what your thoughts are there like is it always invasive like is it always an overstep or can these be asked without feeling intrusive I think why are you still single implies like a shameful thing. Like Mm -hmm. what's wrong? It implies what's wrong with you (laughs) or like, why aren't you married? And implies like something's wrong with one of you guys. I think that it's all in the messaging of like how you ask it. Like, I think if you told me, Oh, I've been dating my boyfriend for nine years, I would say, Oh, do you guys want to get married? Mm -hmm. And that's That's so different than why haven't you guys gotten married? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So you got to still go there. It's just how you word it. Yeah, I think you can go there. I mean, it's so annoying, of course, and triggering as a single person. But like when you're married, then you're going to be asked, when are you guys going to have kids? That's just like the Mm -hmm. nature of humans. And you can't like stop humans from being humans. But I truly think it is in the wording. And it's like, why does someone want to ask? Is it because they want to get to know you more? Do they want to like put you in this box of like, she's a mess you know i could see myself yeah. saying what's up with that where someone's like 
I'm 35 and I'm single. I wouldn't say, why are you still single? But I would be like, oh, why? What's up with that? Is What's that up legal? with that? That is not, that's <laughs> like, so what? judgy. Are you I'll kidding? I'm also in trouble for just people. I'll be like, hey, nice to meet you. So what's your deal? And they're like, what does that even mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Just do what you want with it. <laughs> Oh my god. I guess you get away with it because it's that's kind of like aloof. That like a guy would get away. I don't know. I that's still wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Understood. Don't Understood. do that anymore. <laughs> Understood. I think I mean that's like an example of how that wording is not good either. Like what's up with that? That does imply like why would you be single in 35? Yeah. Well, I just want to know. I'm saying what's up with it. I'm not saying it's shitty. It's just unusual. Can we admit that it's unusual? No. Not in 2024. I don't think that's unusual. Okay. You're you're Back. 34 and single. Do you feel like it would be it would be appropriate if people like said to you, "What's up with that? Why are you single?" I would be like, "I'm bombing on the apps. That's why we're having Julia on because she worked for Tinder. <laughs> we're trying to fix the freaking algo. It's killing the five foot eights." Dan Danny is like, I have one more year before start, people start asking me what's up with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so it's like all sort of in the wording of like not, there's a way to do it without implying that it's not a bad thing. Totally, yeah, yeah, I think so. And look, like people might get triggered. It's That's fine. Mm. Like someone, if you say like, oh, like, do you want to get married? Like it's possible you'd be like, stop asking me. You know, mm. I think that we hear a lot, like with people working on fertility, like, oh, do you want kids? Like mm -hmm. that's a triggering subject, right? Yes. But I think that you have to just do your best to communicate it in a nice way. And that's yeah. all you can really do. And that girl, so like, obviously her response is passive aggressive back. And I've heard that, <laughs> like, I just made a TikTok video about like what to say. And someone said that too. They're like, I'm waiting for you to get divorced or whatever. Or like something passive aggressive back. Yeah. So, so if I am in this situation though, and I have the inclination to say what's up with that, what should I say instead? Tell me, tell me more about your, I'm curious about your dating life. What's it been like? What is, what is okay. dating in LA like? I'm curious. Oh, what's dating life like? Okay. Yeah. That's I'm curious legal. about like, yeah, dating in insert city. I'm curious about dating in you know this era like mm -hmm. but yeah. what's up with your dating life dangerous <laughs> again got it yeah. so let's just avoid what's up yeah i would say i would say that. i almost yeah. feel like the way that you had just worded it danny though before i forget exactly what you said but it almost seemed what's like you were interested in them no not what's up with that you What's you, up did a riff, you did a riff off of what Julia said, and it did seem like you were almost like hitting on the person or like. I am just you, a loose cannon out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm either negging, I'm hitting on, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Going through the cinch a yeah, little I'm bit. Worried. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I understand, I guess here's my question for you. For me, and I think Julia kind of said this earlier, this is. I would usually not touch it. I'm, I'm thinking that is honestly what I would do. Cause I'd be like, don't go there. Um, and I feel like the shameful aspect would usually come from another woman. Fair to say. Yeah. 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 There's a lot more woman on woman crime in this regard. Mm. Yeah. I do feel like, first of all, it's very strange that she just sat down and immediately asked, how old are you? Like, Hmm. That in itself is also a question that like we're not really supposed to be. I know like, that's a sin. I'm good about that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're not supposed to ask a woman their age. <laughs> I know that one. I don't know if that's I like just antiquated guessed. or not, but I just um, say, "What are you? 40? Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and then the yeah, just to like, well, first of all, to gasp like that's so rude. Yeah. And then, cause why are you gasping? You know, like actually this just happened to me. I was at a bachelorette party this past weekend with like, um, my like sister-in-law basically. And she's 26. And then it, I think the ages range from like 21 to 26. So they were much younger. I just turned 34 uh -huh. and, um, like my age came up a couple different times and they like actually did gasp, but because they were like surprised that I was that age yeah. and 
I think that's, I mean, which is like, you know, a, really a nice compliment, but it also felt a little bit, and like, this is a little bit off topic, but just like interesting with like, cause I used to do this too when I was younger of like, you just think thirties are so old and then yeah. you get to your thirties and you're like, Oh, this is like the same fucking thing. Like, I just think society totally like expects once you're in your thirties, like you turn into an old hag or something. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just like funny to me, like with the, like the young girls. And I'm like, you know, when you guys are this age, you're going to look great too. Like it's just mm -hmm. society is like, put this awful thing in our heads that like once you're past your twenties, you're like in the grave. And yeah. So kind of same thing with like dating and where it's like, Oh my God, if you, if you don't have a man or a woman by that age, like there's no hope for you. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Yeah. Th this is also a little off topic, but today, like my mom, it's her birthday. And I was like trying to look for pictures of her. She just mm -hmm. turned 57. And like, I was, I was trying to find some vintage pictures. Like I'm like, she kind of looks old there and she looks good. She looks amazing at 57. Like mm -hmm. we, totally. we cut women's like lifespan or whatever off at like 35. It's crazy. It's, it's wild. No, it, it it really is. It's it's so unbelievably sad. And it just yeah, it makes me like. Yeah, I was just sort of I like I was like very complimented, but I also was like, you know, you got you'll get it one day, you know, <laughs> totally, totally. You had to be that way in your 20s in order to like appreciate who you are in your 30s. Yes, absolutely. So but it seems like her gasp here was more like, a, oh, my God, can't believe you're that old and you don't and you're single, like so invasive right off the bat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have a question in terms of, you know, so this is a bit right. She's doing a bit back. We agree it's passive aggressive. It's a little bit like saying like you're saying something inappropriate to me. So now I'm saying something inappropriate. Um, I guess my concern, and I am I am pro bit, but it is kind of getting in there. You know, I, I was actually just working. Uh, we're we're like rebranding my comedy tour business thing to be like about date nights, and I wanted the first line to be, uh, "Are you single, taken, or actively cheating?" And my friend was like, "That's <laughs> you can't go to cheating, bro. That's like a that's like a crazy topic to just like throw out." So is there a you know what I mean? Like they're kind of getting in there with a knife. Does that make sense? Like they're going for someone's husband, even though it was a violation. Like, is this joke possibly too far? That's what I'm trying to say. It's not great. It's not the best joke. She, if she belittles herself by stooping down to this woman's level for sure, but it's like net net. You guys are, I guess like equally passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. but, but I, oh, yeah. not net net because like someone initiated it they initiated but then she kind of came back harder you know is that fair she I came back with well, i'm gonna fuck your guy like that's kind of aggressive it's like danny with a, duck, with a duck face the duck face is the biggest <laughs> what is the duck face how do you <laughs> like what is, how do you do that you like yeah you like kissy kissy yeah. but like stick them out <laughs> It was very 2008. Yeah. Um, I do think this is one of my theories, you know, my theories, folks, about how the like someone does something wrong to you and then you do something worse back and now they're the victim. Like the original person that did something wrong is now yes. the victim. So now all of a sudden she has like the upper hand in this situation because you're like I, well first off if I was the other person I would be like that was such a weird resp like a cringy response back but like I wouldn't care like I wouldn't be like I don't think I would leave would you guys yeah. leave no no I mean if there was cheating and that's what I'm trying to say right like if there was cheating in that relationship oh, it's a so hot it might have eventually. triggered her yes that's what I'm trying to say I mean I think that like to imply that it's cheating like the guy the guy may not want to have sex you know like yeah she's just saying 
oh i'm gonna like, steal your man <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not really necessarily that he's gonna fuck me it's just like yeah that's, that's fair it's like a it's like a your mom joke a totally, little bit totally. like oh like your mom wasn't saying that when i was when she was screaming my name last night like something <laughs> like that it's like giving that it is it's totally giving that and if you were in a secure relationship like if someone said like i want to fuck your boyfriend i'd be like cool he's hot yeah me too <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah i do almost feel like i would then be like oh okay maybe that was an overstep like i would have read that as oh shit you're right that was like kind of intrusive of me to ask well you both you guys would have done that because you're both mature and not wild but i do think like I'm, i'm willing to like not press charges but i don't think it's actually super savvy and i do think it's a little bit like it's a little too much for me for sure but she's still not the asshole yes i agree i'm not i'm not trying to indict i just i do I do think that this response would be great if you were like out at a bar and some random person asked you it. Like, it's I fun, love yeah. it for that. Yeah. But like, because this is like your sister's sister-in-law, basically, like, let's just not go there. Like, if it, it, it yeah, it's like, because it's, here's the thing. It is a rude thing to say. It's also something I can kind of imagine someone kind of slipping out or whatever. Like, not slipping, but they're just not a very self-aware person. Like, another mm. another great place to drop this is, like, the aunt who always asks. <laughs> Still right. single, huh? You know, I'm like, okay. Yes. But when you're, like, first meeting somebody yes. new that's, like, I important grow. to someone in your li- life that's important to you, yeah. like, you really should be a lot more savvy and uh, polite. <laughs> totally. Give a little yeah. grace. Yeah. 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 Because nope. now you're just making your sister look bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. AITA for my response when asked, why are you still single? I think um i'm i'm saying and i feel like we're in a similar place which is nta oh yeah we're we're gonna say nta and she is for asking in that way yeah you think that she's not an you don't oh okay so we don't think she's an asshole for risk wait i but she kind of is like this is an inappropriate place to do this joke because this was the first time meeting meeting your sister's like sister-in-law so it's like can, everyone an asshole i then? think everyone's an asshole i can meet you there i'll meet you there too <laughs> yes it is people <laughs> all right here we go aita please rate review and subscribe join us on patreon patreon.com slash aita pod over 200 plus episodes uh, where I asked Shannon, why isn't her and her boyfriend married every single episode? Oh boy, I did it. Oh no, I regret it. Okay. Um, why am I still single? Deal? Yeah, there What's we go. What's up with that? <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, literally years of faux pas and horrible things I shouldn't have said. And uh, listen to us on Spotify. All right, here we go. AITA for using an older picture on Tinder. I recently bo- broke up with my first and only girlfriend. We'd been together since we were 16. Never tried dating or online dating for this reason, but figured I might as well give it a shot. So I made a Tinder with some pics. One of them was a candid of me shirtless holding my Maine Coon kitten. That was last year, May, I think, about a year ago. And back then I was crazy lean. I had dieted down for the summer for a long time. I was probably around 8% body fat. I was super cut, abs, Adonis belt, everything. But at that point, I was also quite light and relatively weak. I wasn't really satisfied with my strength. Also, being that lean was really hard. I was really tired and my diet was super strict. That's why I decided to bulk. Gained a lot of strength, but I'm also nowhere near as cut. I'm probably 16% body fat or so, which isn't fat by any means and actually less than the average man, but it's not lean. However, I want to get lean again soon, so I'm getting that physique back and I'll even look a lot better with added mass. Anyway, I matched with the girl. We talked. We seemed to get along well enough, so I set up a date just to have drinks. However, when we met up, she didn't seem as enthusiastic as previous. After some time, she told me she thought I looked different in the pictures and actually pulled that one up after I asked her what she meant. I explained to her how I'd been getting stronger and a bit thicker, but I would work on losing the fat again, and I'd look better than in that pic. However, she kept pestering me about it and how long it would take for me to get back to that, which I found a bit frustrating. 
Personally, I'd prefer a woman who loves me at my bulkiest as much as she loves me at my shreddiest. So there wasn't a second date since I broke off. Contact. AITA for using that pick. It's not super old, and the only difference is that I have a bit more fat mass now. I feel so bad. (laughs) (laughs) I was just thinking about this. I can't believe we're doing this because I'm trying to lose weight, and it's so freaking hard, and I have a newfound appreciation for hot women, and I was thinking about this. I was like, women are so thin, and it's just so freaking difficult like I cannot lose weight and it's pissing me off and I'm probably like 25% body fat. You should move to Austin. It would be the hard, it's so hard to lose weight here because all people do is eat and drink. It's oh, so yeah. The hard. barbecue is yeah. so good. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. I feel like you have lost weight though, Danny. I, well, I lost weight from 200 to 180, but that's it. Oh I can't. God. That's I really good. Can't. That's Thanks, amazing. Guys. I I can't lose weight from where I'm at. Or like it's very difficult, like much more difficult than it was. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm 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 in good shape compared to me, but I'm like people get so much leaner than this and I'm like I don't enjoy any of the food I eat. I mean, freaking beans. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how people get to the point where they're like shredded where you can like see their see their muscles like that. It's insane. Oh, heard. I you think can't they're really like live a good life. <laughs> I think you're like weighing your food and like personally that's not it for me. No. <laughs> Don't no, that's do like that. no. That can really quickly go into um like of eating disorder territory. Yeah. 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 Well, so Julia um, <laughs> used to work at Tinder, and then she also has uh one of her services is that she will uh redo your dating profiles yeah yeah so what are your thoughts on photos like give us a rundown of what are some of the advice that you give there yeah so first and foremost shouldn't be wearing sunglasses in any photos no Mm, no group no group photos like there have been so many times i don't know if you guys have or not you shannon but i guess you danny like have you ever like looked and you're like oh my god they're so they're so cute and it's not the person in the group photo that you thought it was oh i had a law about this i could get canceled for but it's they're never the hottest one in the group photo that's like it's a law of yeah no i'm with you i've heard stories where people have been like they message them and be like hey like who's the girl third in from the left (laughs) there have been times where I've wanted to pull that like that but that's I could never but yeah I know Mm. so no group photos none of that something that I recently learned for like me who's like had dating profiles for so long and like should know better I had like this dating coach look and I was holding a drink in like two of my photos and it's just because you know sometimes when you're out and about like yeah you're you're taking a photo posing with your drink it's you know standard i I totally but then i'm giving off i'm giving off like i'm a girl who just like loves going out all the time and i don't know that that's indicative of my entire personality and so i think like what you really have to focus on is putting pictures out there that are indicative of the things that you like to do Mm. a lot of mine are traveling I feel like I have like a lot of photos at weddings. I love going to weddings. So like, that's fine. It's like subliminal messaging too. Totally. <laughs> to- totally. So, no. <laughs> going back to group photos, I only got one laugh on this ever. And I thought it was so funny, but I had a group photo. It was me and my family and everybody is completely marked out. Like there's no other visible faces. And then I circled my face and put three huge arrows pointing to me. Uh, Which I think is pretty fun. I think that is funny. Thank I like you. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw a profile once where the guy did it, uh, that on every photo. He's like, this is me. It's this <laughs> Every one. photo. This is yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I also hate when people will do like, I don't, obviously I've only seen male profiles, but it says like, I, um, th- I, all my pictures are with my niece and I'm like, don't put it. If you mm. don't like, if you want to, if you need to clarify that this is a kid or not mm. your kid or whatever, and I think that if you have a kid, a photo with your kid is good and appropriate. Yes, like I totally. think that you should showcase your kid. But to- yeah, the niece and nephew are always a little tricky because it's like if they miss you explaining, then it's like, oh, this could be like a single parent. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that is a big like no for a lot of people. Totally. Also, a- I- 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Danny. There's a listener and, she, and you know, we we're always going back and forth and she's telling me, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm looking for a serious relationship. And she's like, she sends me her profile and everything is like bikini, booty, boobs. And I was like, if I saw this profile, I would definitely not think that's what you were looking for just visually. Like, that's not what you're selling here, ma'am. Totally. Unless yes. that is what she, yeah, as she's saying she wants something serious. No, yeah. Yeah. For sure. No bikini photos. No. Uh, oh, you say no. See, I would say, well, I think one is okay, but you would you go all the way to no, huh? The dating experts I've interviewed are like, no. Yeah, I don't think I would. I don't. And back in the day when I was on them, I, I never did that. I mean, you know, you want to show off like your physique in a way, but in like, you know, a nice dress or something like that. Like, you know, you're just giving it away for free <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So what are your thoughts on on this situation, though? Like, do you think that it should be always up to date or, you know, at least reflective of how you look currently? I want to caveat with the fact that I have a lot of empathy for this person who hasn't been able to take photos because they've been in a relationship for so long. I empathize with the situation. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I will generalize you should be putting up photos that are reflecting what you currently look like and not what you're mm-hmm. trying to look like like you you got to be real on the platform um and i i think that this is an example first of all i think the girl handled it really poorly to like mm. continue talking to him just say like you're not interested you don't have to give him that much detail yep. and mm. go super into it um but i think this is an example of why why it goes awry like you will have these situations come up I, I can see that it's a say and I mean I, I'm generally for what you're saying I guess and I think I'm definitely projecting my own standards here because I think I think to be super lean like su- this is crazy lean like 8% body fat for a woman is like I believe that's actually dangerous like you're not supposed to go that low um so I'm like not I don't for know. men no yeah men men can go i think even lower but like yeah i mean Mm -hmm. like like we're saying like it does start to get a little bit like that's all you're doing when you're that lean because your body's like hey we're actually starving so if we could eat that'd be great um (laughs) but i guess my thought the only defense i could kind of say is like i do see a truth here in the picture which is that like this is a person who's very into fitness and it is impressive it's kind of like running a marathon you know like if you depict yourself finishing a marathon, it's like, well, can you actively run a marathon, but you still ran it. And that's an impressive physical thing, you know? Yeah. 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 I think especially because like he can get back to this. It's not like it was just like in the past when you were like in high school, that's what you looked like. It was just like just a year ago. And he's the type of person that like bulks and then leans and bulks and leans. Um, but yeah, like maybe while you're in your bulk, like maybe it would be better to not represent your body that way, especially we had like a comment that said, um, on Tinder, dude, no, Tinder is used far more often just to have sex. And I bet that girl was hoping to lick some abs, not stick by you while you got ripped again. (laughs) So I do think like specifically (laughs) if she was just looking to hook up, like this was like super misleading. Yeah. Is that a thing? I, Lick abs, ladies? Is that what we're about? Uh, I don't know that I would lick them per yeah, se, but definitely like touch them. them and enjoy them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like a good tummy. I just never heard the phrase lick abs. I didn't know that. Lick that's abs. Going. Washboard abs. Yeah. Mm. Trying to get some washing done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She, yeah, she was looking to get her laundry done that evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do think that it's like, I wonder, say we put this in terms of like height, like say the guy said he was six foot, but he was really like 5'10", 5'11". And, you know, like for someone like me, who's like 5'10", 5'10 and a half or whatever, like I, I just, that would be more important to me because then I would Mm -hmm. like meet up with them and be like oh like you actually aren't as tall as you said you were and you know whatever like it wouldn't be a deal breaker and I certainly wouldn't like be less enthused like be less enthusiastic like she was like I just feel like she was really rude the second she met up with him yeah and it's like 
you're there enjoy yourself like at least try but um what do you guys think about like is this kind of a lie in the way that like lying about your height is a lie i think it's less criminal than a I mean, it's a pretty substantial difference. Eight to 16 is that's a, that's a different body, you know? Yeah. I feel like I don't know what the difference between eight to 16. I know. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know, but I, like, eight I can't ripped, imagine. Like ripped. Like you can see all the striations and definition. But then 16 of all the muscles. is what? 16, like 16 is lean. Bad. Like you can yeah. see like some shapeliness of the muscles, but it's not like cut. I think if you're still in the lean category, it's not that big of a lie and that misleading. Cause like the height thing, you can't grow, but like with mm. weight, you can ebb and flow and like an eight to 16% body fat difference. We're not talking eight to 40% body right. fat difference, you know? Yeah. It's like, he doesn't seem like he's heavy by any means, like completely different. It just seems like he's like slightly softer. Yeah. There's a lot of bodybuilding memes about how the only guy, the only people who care about how ripped you are are other guys, and this is this conversation is proving it completely. <laughs> like you, totally. this is the one girl apparently who cares. Totally, totally. A girl would, ne yeah. Like Shannon, like Shannon said, she'd never like message like it. you should, yeah, should never lie again. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the ding here, I, I do have to ding. I, I think I think the context is important. I think the comment nails it. I think even though you guys are saying you personally wouldn't care, I think we do all agree that being deceptive on a dating profile, this is a form of deception. It, it, it was substantial mm -hmm. to the girl, which proves there's some, you know, meat to the deception. I guess my question for you guys is, what about a haircut? We all get our haircut. Would that be mm -hmm. deceptive? I mean, we need to update it for every haircut. Yeah, I like like people will post a photo and be like, "My hair's long now" or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just they'll like, write it in text. You're saying yes, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Especially during COVID, there was like a lot of that. I feel yeah, like yeah, with like the yeah. facial hair too. I bet. <laughs> I just feel like why can't you just take a picture of what you currently look like as well, and then like you can yes. also put like old photos when your hair is like buzz, and it's like oh okay, I can see them in all different forms. But like, there's no reason we all have phones, fucking cameras right there. Like, there's no reason why you couldn't just snap a pic, like put on a cute little outfit, take one in your apartment. You know, it's really not that hard. Yeah. AITA for using an older picture on Tinder. I think where I'm at here, I guess my question is, are we able to ding her? She kept pestering him. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing, the too, is that she kept asking, like, how long will it take you to get <laughs> yeah. back to that? That is so fucked up. Yeah. That's like the one. I think I've told this story on the pod before, but this time that I went on a dating um a date with uh, like a tinder date or something and he didn't i he like must not have liked my curly hair because he one of my pictures i guess it was straight i definitely had curly hair in other photos though and he just was like well next time can you wear your hair straight and i'm like next time there will be no <laughs> next time Adam. and he wanted me to like wear that same dress that i was wearing and stuff too it was just That's so such sick. a turn off and so gross well do and i have a girl for him <laughs> Right? That's like the far yes. end of the spectrum. You should look identical to the photograph. Can you make that face Truly. though? The picture face. Make the picture face. Exactly. Like, I don't like her. No, she's an asshole. I'm not into her. The fact that she was rude almost immediately off the bat. I've had that happen to me before. I told it on the pod before. But yeah, this guy, like, immediately I could just tell I wasn't what he thought I was and was just a, like completely cold. And it was so rude. And it was just like, if you're going to be here, be here. Yeah. I, I think I, this is something you don't call out. That's what she did, right? So she shows up. She's not as enthusiastic. That's her right. She was deceived. But then she said, um, she told him, you look different in the pictures. And then pulled it up. I think that does cross. I think I you don't need to be, you don't need to be confronting people about this. If they look different enough that it bothers you, then that's it. Yeah. She's the asshole. Yeah. He just tip to this guy. Just change your photos. Yeah. I don't think he's the asshole. It's just like maybe this is a bit of a learning lesson. 
Mm, I don't know. I can't. I think it's ESH for me. They, he deceived her. She didn't need to call it out so aggressively. She should have just bailed. To deceive on a dating profile in a substantial way, which I think this is, I think it's a sin. It's annoying. It's like, oh my God, I had to meet up with you and you're not what you look like? Like, bro. This is why I do a FaceTime screen now. You do the FaceTime screen. Oh. I'm the FaceTime. I've been deceived through a FaceTime screen, though. Some of these girls are very <laughs> clever. Wait, what have they done? They know how to set up the camera right. And then you can't be like, give me, let me see which, look, get a mirror. You know, like you got to just, they, they can position well, there's that. There's like a filter on it or something. Filter, or just, just lighting. Like, hey, what's up? You guys can't see, but I just made it. So it's only my head. But uh, like, uh... there's ways. <laughs> anyway. It's not the end of the world. I, I think there's no reason to call it out. Like, you know, people are dealing with their own thing. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, but I am I am kind of at ESH with this. But I think let's settle out. Julia? I I don't think he's the asshole. I don't know. Okay. I don't think he's... Yeah. So you're at... Yeah, I don't think he was inten- I don't think he was intentionally deceiving her. But I do think that maybe he should take that photo off until he's back to it. Yeah. So you guys yes. are both NTA and she is. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, that's great. <laughs> I love women, but just kidding. Guys, please rate, <laughs> review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. That's right. Everything here is about gender. Damn it now. <laughs> rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. And Shano, take us out. AITA for wanting my best friend to listen to my podcast. I recently started a podcast about IPAs, beards, and Star Wars. YTA, YTA, <laughs> nuclear YTA, bro. This is not a podcast concept. That's not a concept. The biggest, the biggest hipster ever. Um, he says they're basically my favorite things. And I've been struggling to grow it recently. I had to quit my job to focus on my podcast, so it's really important that I make money soon so my wife isn't the sole provider. To try to get some other ideas, I asked my best friend to listen to the podcast and give me advice on how it could be more interesting. He did so, and I found his advice really helpful. I started asking him for his help every time I released an episode, which was every week, and mostly he seemed not to mind. I didn't want him to do it for nothing, so I offered to pay him $15 an episode for his help. I did notice that his suggestions were getting much shorter and less helpful, but I thought maybe the podcast was just improving. After a couple of months, he started putting off the weekly podcast advice for a few days at a time. He'd say things like, I'm busy, I'll get to it, or... I'll try to send some ideas when I can think of some. This was pretty frustrating for me because I couldn't make my adjustments for the next week until he gave me his notes. Eventually, it got to the point where he was almost an entire week late on getting any meaningful notes. I texted him probably a dozen times over the week, but he kept telling me he was busy. I called him several times over the next day or two, and when I finally got a hold of him, I said we had to discuss our agreed arrangement. I told him I felt like it was unfair of him to take the money. I then moan him every Monday because I always assume I'll get advice soon without being prompt about his notes. At this point, he kind of blew up at me about how he was doing this as a favor to me and that he was very busy lately. I told him I'd like a refund on my money and to let me know when he is ready for the responsibility again. He basically told me to go fuck myself and has barely talked to me since. I know he has a lot on his plate since he is a widower and a single father, but we had an agreement and if he didn't think he could uphold his end, he should have just told me beforehand so I wouldn't be relying on his advice and paying him his fee. AITA? Yes. (laughs) Yeah, wow. Holy that was a doozy. I also wish everyone could see Danny's face throughout that all because it was good. That was giving all the answers. <laughs> this that person, was I am so exhausted by this person instantly. And let me just say, fine, I know people like Star Wars. That's your right to be corny. But beards and IPAs, what is there to say, folks? I mean, we get it. Yeah. It's hair True. on your face and it's a beer. Like, what yeah, are like, you I say? guess there's really like zero correlation to the topics on this podcast. They're not related. 
And like, no. I, what can you say? Like, is there, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Is there a sommelier podcast? But like, gosh, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But... I don't think that that would be very, like, unless it came with like, a package of beers that arrived at your doorstep and you right. could taste that while you're listening to the yes, podcast. Oh, that might be a business channel. That's actually a pretty good idea. Tana, <laughs> Tana that, describes that, mine. <laughs> that was a crazy one. And like, it was already crazy. And then the kicker was he's a widower. <laughs> like, I know. You know that his partner just died and you're like, let me make things more miserable for you. Listen to my oh. podcast. And by the way, is About. it solo? <laughs> I think it's a solo podcast. He doesn't Probably. say there's anybody else on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's just talking. And he quit his job. I mean, Julia, you did this too, but it's like, you know, you don't have another person to like support or rely on financially, you know, and like, it just feels so like premature. Like if it hasn't yep. grown, why would you quit your job just yet? Well, his wife's taking care of the house. No big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's giving like narcissist. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I do appreciate that he at least like offered money, but like, you know, I'm assuming the podcast is an hour long and then you have to like sit down and think of notes. Like it just does not feel he, like enough. <laughs> he's offering like minimum wage. Like I don't even, I think California minimum wage is higher now. That's $15 is nothing nowadays. I don't know. That's crazy. And it also just seems like it kind of seems like he wasn't really down. It kind of seems like this person was being polite and like, sure. Yeah, man, I'll, I'll listen fine. And then it just mm -hmm. starts like, well, I'll pay you to listen. He's like, uh, okay. Like it kind of sounds like this guy is probably getting walked on a bit because his wife just died and he doesn't have a lot of energy to be like, leave me alone. Yes. Yes. That's why he can't confront you and tell you he, he was being a good best friend. Yeah. And then you were being way too greedy and he doesn't have the energy right now to confront you and think of what to say to you. It's so terrible. Totally. I hate this. This Did is like AI. when you were sorry, God. I was just gonna say this is like AI generated a podcast to make me upset. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. We had a comment that said, what, you don't listen to beer, beards and Boba Fett? <laughs> That's actually a good name. That is That's good. So when you were starting your podcast out, like what were you sending it to friends and family like for any kind of advice or feedback or just to get like support from them? What was your... Yeah, I like posted it and I still post it on my Instagram, but mm -hmm. it's not for everyone, which I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Like a lot of my friends are married. <laughs> They're not going to listen right. to a dating podcast. It's totally fine. They don't love me any less. I, I think it's really, really nice if someone shares or listens. It's a nice to have. It's not a need to have. Our friendship mm -hmm. isn't indicative on you listening to my podcast. But I, I will say like, if you're a friend of mine, like maybe you should follow my podcast just for the fault, you know, like that, yes. that's, that's easy. Totally. Yeah. I, I have long-term friends who are listeners and they'll always like update me. They're like, I'm sorry. I haven't been listening to the podcast. I'm like, it's not mandatory. Like you don't even need to bring it up. Like you're my friend now. It's not, a, it's not an issue. Totally. Yeah. I definitely have like, I mean, my, my, my mom and my sister listen, like I do have a handful of friends that definitely listen, but it seems like they listen because they genuinely enjoy the podcast and it doesn't seem like they're not, they're doing it like for me. And I remember one of my friends, actually, he is on a, um, sketch team at like at UCB, which is a mm -hmm. big comedy. Um, and I hadn't made it out to it. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm such a bad friend. And he was like, well, just go if you want to go. Like, you don't have to do it for me. We have an audience. Like we have a bunch of people that come like it's, you don't have to do it for me. And yeah. like, that's sort of how I feel like with this podcast is like, we have listeners, like we don't need you to listen if you don't in genuinely enjoy it. Totally. Totally. 
Yeah, I think it's like a beginner kind of energy and I understand it. And I think I think it's hard to be a beginner artist, especially because you probably don't know a lot of artists. Uh, you know, you're kind of just getting into that community, especially with something like podcasting or like YouTubing. It's like you're not necessarily connected to a bunch of people. So, like, I, I think I think it's important to be supportive. But, you know, people have to get a grip on like they got to get a grip. Like you're taking up someone's time who may not want to dedicate weekly notes for you like it's a lot it's work it is yeah. work and it does seem like as you guys were saying before like it just wasn't really agreed upon it was kind of just put yeah. on him yes and i think another thing i like to bring up which is that i've had seven podcasts so um six of them went seven nowhere. yeah wait i didn't know that <laughs> they were very short-lived yeah one was only i think like eight episodes but yeah it was called beer and boba fett yeah, yeah it was <laughs> we didn't need the uh the beards i didn't really have <laughs> enough there oh my god i'll have to are they still out there i need to go listen uh yeah i mean i could track them down but i think one never <laughs> one was never released because i kept making fun of my friend i was too mean we're still friends now but um <laughs> <laughs> anyway another relationship that i ruined um, um but yeah oh, this... wait, i did oh sorry no go ahead, go ahead julie i had a question because like you were saying like some of your friends that like are are married and whatever yeah. like it's not really pertains to them i was gonna ask you like since your brand has kind of been built around like being single like do you almost feel a pressure to like remain single no, because I think that I hope to like prove to everyone like my experiment worked like yeah. I I did enjoy my life and I did, you know, and like I found someone and I want all my fault. Like I think that humans want to be in a relation. It's like a human need for connection. And mm -hmm. I hope that we all kind of do it together. I think about like Alex Cooper and call her daddy. Like, yeah, she kind of did that really well. And I think I'll never forget what it's like to be single, you know, like I'll still right. know the lessons. Um, so no, I don't feel that pressure, but it'll definitely probably be like a learning curve to evolve, but mm -hmm. I don't worry about that. Well, and you know, it's a relationship podcast at the end of the day. Like if you're in a relationship, like that still pertains, like you'll be able to speak from a different perspective. And like you were saying, like, you're not going to forget that those other feelings. Yeah, totally. Loves it. You know what? I pulled up my list of podcasts. I want, I want to share this with you guys. <laughs> okay. okay. One, <laughs> it was recorded. I think I was actually a prophet for this. I should have stuck to this. Then, then I wouldn't have to deal with Shannon. It was called... <laughs> It was called Robots Only, and this was a couple years ago. And I think it was when like self-driving cars were kind of trending, and it was recorded at a hotel. Um, mm. I did eight episodes of that. My friend Ronnie mm. and I had a podcast where I was too mean. Um, during what was that one called? <laughs> that one didn't even get a name, I don't think. That's what's uh, not out? No, it was never released. One was called, oh, God, this is so cringe. I was like, I was a COVID prepper. Like, I was insane. I was into COVID, like, in January. Mm. I was freaking out. So I you started. You were hoarding all the toilet paper. Yes, I bought, I bought in a Manhattan apartment in the Upper East Side. I bought giant buckets. And I was ready to buy, like, 50 pounds of beans. And my girlfriend was like, we're not, you're not buying those beans. Oh, my and I was God. Like, okay. And so I started to put a in the bucket. <laughs> to put in the buckets they were food safe buckets um and i started a podcast called the wuhan incident and it was like very serious and i was like wuhan is this new whatever i don't even know what i said i don't even know what that is uh wuhan's where covid started oh oh wow yeah you block that out ptsd <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shannon missed a lot she's like covid oh, okay what's that it's like a, what was a what's problem. that again <laughs> Um, I had a podcast called Two Idiots and Another Idiot, and that was with my friends oh my Kevin God. and Lucas. Um, and then I had a podcast called The Goat, which was about the greatest of all time with Ronnie and Lucas. So some people got uh, repeated. And then I had a podcast called Surpriser on my podcast, where I would just call someone <laughs> Surpriser. I, mean, I think that was kind of Oh my God. Yeah. And then I had that's this, so um, good. Shannon, we can hear you typing very loudly, so I don't know what you're writing. <laughs> I'm writing them all down so I can go and listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? You're just gonna make fun of me? Why would you do that? Exactly. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm flattered or hurt, but I love it. Um, well, I actually just came across because I was a guest on on this podcast like back in 2021. 
uh-huh. um, like like two years before I joined, and I just listened to it last night. I like came across it as I was like googling myself because my friend was googling <laughs> herself, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, what is out there of me?" And it popped up, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have to listen to this." It's so funny how formal we are to each other. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's funny. It's like one episode one seventy seven. If anyone wants to go back and listen, that's also awesome. time ago. That's such a LA afternoon to be like, I was hanging with my friend and we were Googling. I know. (laughs) Truly. I have a, I have a wiki feed out there. Cool. I love that. Can't get, it shouldn't be giving them away for free, but what am I supposed to do? Like (laughs) they're all for my Instagram, like cut off my feet when I'm wearing like sandals or something. Power back, Shannon. Only fans. Their feet finder. Yeah. They're out there already. I gave it away for free. (laughs) Oh. Okay. So anyway, back to this. It is overstepping, especially the fact that he is a widower. You should be like, go find someone else that's like willing to do it. Yeah. YTA for sure. And also, like, you can't tell on your own, like, what's working and what's not. I mean, I guess it is good to hear, like, audience perspective, but, like, I don't know. Clearly something's not working, I guess. Probably it's because you have three random topics that have nothing to do with one another. (laughs) Yes. Like, they say you should get specific when you're you're making a (laughs) podcast, but I think this might be a little too specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is for one guy, and you are the guy. (laughs) Yeah. pretty much i think we're lined up i think this guy just isn't really like he's not listening to the people around him who must have expressed this was a bad idea and that this idea isn't working and that they don't want to do this task i think we're all lined up this is just a clear yti right yeah not the wanting but the pressure he's putting on people the pressure definitely and like not taking the hint like texting a dozen times over the week that's crazy that is that's such an overstep totally um well julia i just want to say you are an incredible guest i had so much fun thank you for joining us i had so much fun too i I, like missed you guys it's so nice to be all together again I know. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to plug your stuff so everyone can find you? Her podcast is so good. Yeah. So my podcast is called Pretty Much Done. Everywhere you can find your podcast, specifically Spotify, of course. Shout out to Spotify. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And then I am PMD pod pod on tiktok and instagram where i overshare about my dating life. And that's probably why I'm single. So you can follow me there. And go send her some love to outweigh those fucking (laughs) trolls. That would be nice. (laughs) Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And forever in Austin, we'll hit you up and get some barbecue. I would love that. I would, would, Danny, not maybe not for your diet plan right now, but it would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can have a little cheat day. (laughs) There's only one meal I want to eat with you, Julia. I think you know what it is donuts. Shakshuka, come on! Shakshuka. Oh, oh my god, I messed that up. That's so good. That's so she good. She said donuts because the first time we met her, we brought her, we asked her what her favorite pastry was, and we brought her donuts. Moki nuts. Shakshuka was better. Shakshuka, Shakshuka was a good one. Shakshuka. We will have Shakshuka. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.